Hi and welcome back to Family Sociology. We're going to be looking at family and the work world. Now the majority of families with children now have either a lone parent or both parents in the workforce. Most married or cohabitating partners both hold jobs. Paid employment takes up a large portion of the day and demands of a great deal of energy. It has far-reaching consequences for family life, including the care of children while parents work and the responsibility for the household duties. As the baby boom generation ages, there will be greater need for elder care. Because of competing demands, some family members can suffer burnout. Stress can, however, be reduced by flexible work policies. In this chapter, we're going to examine the many important issues related to family and the work world. So let's get started. The one family, two income seems to be our new reality. More and more, families are affected by the interplay between work and family responsibilities. A significant societal trend is increasing in number of women employed outside the home. Now if you check, and I think I put it up behind me here, the table 12.1 in your text, it looks at the employment trends of men and women. Women in the workforce is a growing trend in our society. 1931, 16%, 1-6% of women had paid employment. 70% of men. By 2015, just under 66% of women were employed. So. What's influencing these shifts? Well, women are more have more education, and that's one of the major life chances in sociology. If you want to make a change in your life, education is going to make that change. Secondly, the labor market has also changed. And then thirdly, the cultural values have also changed to make it possible where women can work and it's not seen as a negative thing anymore. The proportion of dual income families has gone from about 40% in the 1970s to a little over 60% in the 90s and it's been leveling off since then. About 69% in 2014. Now with table 2.2, again I think I put that up behind me there, notice that the employment rate of the 25 to 44 year old men has dropped about 5% from the 80s to the 2015 while women have increased by 20% for the same age group and time frame. Having two incomes is a financial improvement however it can seriously affect parenting and household responsibilities. The division of labor within the home so well, let's touch on that sort of work and family dynamic. Work and family interact both positively and negatively. We will explore some of the relationships between work and family. Changing gender roles is a very big one. Families are changing faster than the roles and expectations have for the balance of family and work. Now if you can recall from the very beginning we talked about the traditional family where the husband is the breadwinner and the wife is the home, you know, in the home to care for children in the household and this was known as the intensive mothering and is not nearly as common today as it was in the past. What's more common are dual earners and the need for this balance of responsibilities, this need to work out of the home and care within the home. So it brings us to these roles and expectations. You know, men and women are finding that the challenge of balancing how they feel about themselves in a relationship with those of society's expectations of how they're supposed to behave. Now, one positive trend has been, has been seeing men are being much more involved with child rearing than in the past. And this is a response, or sorry, this, is rep, this represents about one third of the couples, which means that there's still two thirds of dual income earners where the woman is responsible for the child care and household and working full time or part time. And this is what's known as the double shift child caring 
in the you know in the evening and working in the daytime for example now some of the competing issues that occur well there's expectations of the family members are major stress in dual income families you know if you've got all these other things you need to do while you're both working yes you have more income but you don't seem to have more time some of the traditional ideals of family togetherness and quality time with children don't coincide with the dual income families expectations of employers and fellow co-workers may be uh, anti-family even shift work can cause major stress in families sometimes you feel like two ships passing in the night as it were given the many of demands on their time dual earner couples often spend relatively little time with friends and extended family when some social networks are limited families may experience lower levels of social supports now this may feel like a higher level of stress for many families well and that's just touching on the roles so what about household responsibilities well hard physical housework has been reduced through the introduction of utilities electricity running water and such technology has made household work uh, different rather than less we got the dishwasher the laundry machines the microwaves it does quick work of dishes and laundry and heating up food however there's always more work the amount of time spent on household work is related to income levels age and quality of housing personal standards for meal preparation and cleanliness most housework is still done by women the shift from wage earner husbands to dual earner um, families has not meant an um, an equal shift in the household responsibilities it's moving in that direction but it's not there yet rather it's you know what it leads to more conflicts over just how household work and child care should be divided now table 12.3 behind me it's in your textbook since men traditionally have not had to concern themselves with family care some view housekeeping chores as unmasculine now it's important to note at this particular juncture when we use the term things like feminine and masculine these are socially constructed there's no rule book about what masculinity is and we're not born with masculinity so it's an interesting component when we sort of as men think that well it's not very masculine well it's because we haven't been socialized to pick up things after ourselves and do them all the time but these things are changing husbands do tend um, tend to do the highest share, share of housework about 35 percent when partners earnings with their partner they're equal the more equal the earnings are the more equal the household responsibilities are interestingly now working couples and their social network the network of support that we all rely on when social networks are limited the family may experience more stress the network needs to actively give and take to be balanced not doing so can reduce or cut off some of the support and increase the ins the isolation that occurs so within a family of course family cares for its members so caring for the family members this of course really is important in families generally but it's especially as we enter the sandwich generation as you remember from a previous chapter this is where we are caring for our own children and we care for our elderly parents that's the sandwich generation it can produce what's known as caregiver strain and it's a term used to describe the burdens that caregivers on a day-to-day -day basis of their lives that can attribute to the need to provide care and assistance to someone else now there are some direct costs to this dual income it reduces you know the when we are caring for somebody there could be a reduced income or missing of work that would be direct costs where the indirect cost to caring for our family is there could be less social time reduced work assign uh, advancements uh, physical and emotional costs um, can be there and those are indirect costs now as far as 
looking after children, our child care in Canada, is closely tied to our social attitudes towards women's work. It was long held societal assumption that children are best off at home and um, looked after by their mothers. Daycare centers established only when it benefited society, either from a desire for better supervision of children or from the need for the mothers to join the workforce. Now you can see some of the graphs on figure 12.2 or 12 .2 behind me on child care in Canada. Now there are some variations of child care and you'll see that in figure 12.1. Child care can be either regulated or unregulated. If it's an unregulated daycare, it provides, uh, is provided by someone other than the parents or the immediate family member. The regular care, regulated care, is usually a center-based where service is provided by the college-trained early childhood educators and the meeting of provincial standards of the circumstances and conditions of those environments. In the past decade, a modest increase in the number of regulated space Canada-wide. Nonetheless, in 2014, space available was only for only about 25% of Canadian children ages 0 to 12 years of age. So quite short on available spaces. Changes in availability and cost of daycare affect women more than men because, well, they still are expected to provide the bulk of care. Several factors influence the kind of child care um, parents can choose. That might be due to the age of the child, uh, the parent's income or job type, whether you do shifts or not, the family characteristics, or the community in which they live in. Now, in Canada, there are what's known as the four pillars of child care. Child care in Canada described as resting on four pillars. The first pillar is government funding. Provincial and territories receive federal government transfers to spend as they need. This, provincial, this provides provincial differences in child care options. Secondly, there's an income tax relief for families. The Canada Child Benefit is a tax-free payment based on family income. The third pillar is something that doesn't occur in every country, and yet you kind of wonder how come. It doesn't happen in the States, and that is maternity and, and paternity leave uh, benefits. 17 weeks of leave for the mother of a newborn, the next 35 weeks can be split between the two parents. And then the fourth pillar is the universal and free kindergarten offered through the public school system. Now there are options as well for elder care. Again, because of the sandwich generation, many families are looking after their own elderly parents. As baby boomers age, they're, um, they're gonna grow, uh, their growing need for elder care services in Canada is gonna go out of the roof. Age in place and home care are growing interests for seniors. And, you know, living in their own home and having care provided them there. Now, if you check on figure 12.4 and in the particular um, box 12.3 on elder care options, there's an overview of elder care options there. Now, there are some conflicts that are going to work between work and family. And these sort of conflicts lead to work-family conflicts. And this is defined as the stress that arises when work and family demands are mutually incompatible. With the advent of technology development, you know, email and the whole bunch of technology, work can interfere with family 24-7. Cell phones, tablets, all of our devices can and do influence us and the sense of availability for work. Family interference with work, as you would expect, this relates to when family interferes with work. Example, it's when you go to work when you have a sick child at home or a friend that's on your mind and while you're at work, you have this child on your mind or your friend on your mind. So that's the influence of 
family influencing work and then there's work interference with family here work interferes with family life as you would expect the more typical interference work may have a higher expectation for, of you and your time even though you work nine to five however your boss expects some evening and or weekends now we will sacrifice family for work as our culture does value money and there are times when extra money does or might help one's family stress and uncertainty can continue and this can produce what are known as blurred boundaries if you have ever brought work home to just finish up, this is what is known as blurred boundaries. With all the work and family juggling that needs to do in order to balance family life and work can result in one or both of the following role concerns. One of them is role spillover. Now role spillover is when work and family roles and or the demands of time interfere with one another meaning you just don't have enough time to do everything and then over sorry role overload and this refers to when the demands of our time and energy are that are associated with performing the multiple roles are just too great to do any of the roles very adequately or comfortably now there are strategies to employ though so some of the things to do to combat some of this is manage work cycles and family cycles to advantage the important things from each pressure in a timely manner. We could purchase time-saving products, things that, you know, like permanent press closing reduces the amount of laundry potentially, or, you know, have that dishwasher and household support services, having a cleaning service coming in can certainly make some things easier for the two family incomes. As you may have, uh, may have anticipated, another term that may be more common today is burnout. And burnout is that state that occurs when a person experiences prolonged stress without learning how to cope with it. Now this is something, maybe not only family related, that we may have experienced. It can have many direct and indirect impacts on the adults, as well as their children. The term used to describe the burden in caregivers on our day-to-day -day lives can be attributed to, this, um, to the need to provide care or assistance to someone else, and it's known as caregiver strain. And this is the physical, emotional, and financial stresses associated with caring for a dependent. There's relatively little consideration has been given to the interplay between family and work responsibilities and the care of an aging family member. Much more attention has been paid to child care. We can see going forward, this family work balance is going to be very important. Now, family work balance is a self-defined state of well-being that recognizes the interrelatedness of work life and family life apart from work. And it consists of three components. There's a time balance, equal time given to work and family. It requires us to be um, thoughtful and considered and stick to the tasks. Secondly, involvement balance. This is a equal levels of psychological involvement and work and family roles. And then thirdly is satisfaction balance, the equal levels of satisfaction for work and family roles. Now some of the ways that we've adjusted work to accommodate family and vice versa is with flexible work arrangements. Flexible work arrangements are one of the ways to address the problem of competing demands for work and family. Now this is certainly you know, topical amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Look at how things have gone remote. Working from home. We all did this in two weeks in March of 2020. Now, some examples of flex work include flex time. It's a system of working a set number of hours with the starting and finishing times chosen within agreed limits by the employee. 
Women with flexible work schedules feel less stressed by family responsibilities than those with more rigid schedules. Flex time has had some mixed reviews as to how effective it really may be. Another example is what's known as telework, a work arrangement in which the employee works outside the office, often from home. It appeals to people who commute long distances every day, or for people who do not want children to spend 10 hours or more a day in a childcare and who want more flexibility in their scheduled daily work. Now, we need to be con constantly connected, you know, with work at times, and we never really feel off the job, linked to lower family satisfaction. Reduced hours of work, it's not as common. I mean, some people do. It's job sharing or a work arrangement in which two employees can share a single full-time job. With prorated salaries and benefits, part-time work allows individuals to uh, fulfill care responsibilities for children and older relatives. Women are, you know, more than men tend to choose working fewer hours. Well, there we go. Another quick overview looking at family and work world and how they interact and certainly in this new era of work these kinds of pressures have been even greater maybe than what we've seen in the past and our ability to adapt and for our culture to adapt is going to be important okay everybody there we go we have one more chapter to do we'll see you next week for that one chapter bye now